Hello, everybody. Welcome to Indies Live. Thank you for waiting. Uh, but welcome and congrats mostly to myself for making it here to talk to you. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, we are kind of getting settled still, admittedly. Um, so the questions that you may have left, I won't be able to get to right away, which I'm sorry about, but we are working on getting that uh, to happen. So in the meanwhile, if you have a question uh, or an asset, really, uh, that you'd like me to check out, please send it in either, if you're watching on Facebook, in the comment section or YouTube, and I will address them. Um, and if you have already posted um, on the watch page, if you know what I'm talking about, if you're an indie Pro member, and you want that um, looked at, please send it again in the live comments sections, because that's what it's going to be uh, for the moment in terms of getting me uh, your, you know, your curiosities and questions. So while, um, while I'm sitting here, I will be trying to load the conventional, you know, questions queue. But for right now, uh, let me know what your questions are. Um, I need to see some things to work with. What I'll start with um, right now is I'll, I guess I'll give a little rundown. Um, this is called Indies Live, and it is normally a service for only our pro members, but in coronavirus times, we've expanded our access a little bit to the larger community, and we're bringing this uh, this service to both our um, general YouTube channel and our our larger uh, Facebook group as well. So uh, this is an audit session. We have two kinds, or I guess three kinds of Indies Live. One is, th the main two are audit sessions and Q and A's. And this one is an audit session, meaning you can bring forth your assets of any kind, uh, emails, web pages, ads, uh, videos, anything like that. Um, bring them my way and I'll take a look at them. If you have a general question, please um, just kind of center it around assets, just to kind of keep this on on uh, you know on track and on pace. If you have a question, uh, I will probably prioritize it less over someone who has an asset, just because this is an audit session. So let that be known. But I am uh, keeping tabs on all the comments that are coming through. So. Um, I'm not sure who's watching on Facebook right now. We got a few people. Hello. Uh, and on YouTube, it looks like we have Jeremy. Hello. MXU Beats and Electric Neon Cl uh, Clouds. Hello. Um, so let's see what we got. MXU Beats has a quick question here. He says, I'm trying to decide if three videos on your IG are good candidates for face. Uh, for, sorry, for fan on Facebook. Would I be able to take a quick peek and let you know if they're suitable? Yes. Um, send me your IG um, handle, and I'll hop onto my phone, or I guess I'll hop onto the desktop equivalent, and we'll take a look at it. Electric Neon Clouds, can you send me your web EPK? Yes, you can. Go ahead and send the link where you can. Revic Records, you are here. Hey, glad to hear it. Glad to see you here. Um, hello, Shay on Facebook. I'm so glad to see you here. Let me know if you have anything you want me to look at. Um, so yeah, Revic or Electric Neon Chords, send your EPK and MXU, send me your IG handle. I guess I can maybe look up MXU beats and see if, um, that's kind of the obvious handle. So I'll check that out. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. You are so welcome. And I see. Also, do I sound okay, everybody? Is it? Do, you know what I mean. Is it happening? All right. And I see you beats. All right. I found your IG because it looks like it's the same profile here. Um, MXU. MXU beats. Okay. I'm gonna share my screen right quick. And we'll take a look, 
sorry for the strange um, resolution here, but uh, this will this will have to be what it is. Um, MXU beats. Are you talking about these three up here? Maybe not all of these are videos. You guys aren't going to be able to really hear, but well, it's like vaporwave. <laughs> Microcord <laughs> for bass. Cool. Did I see? I want to know how long this. They never show the run times on IG videos. Okay, is that an emu sampler, by the way? Because those are tight, and they're kind of, like, rare. So let me say off the bat, if that's one, I guess let me hop over and um, and make sure that we're, I'm not missing out on anything. Um, the top three in the first row. Cool. One and three is studio. Two is live performance. Um... That first one I just watched is a great fan finder. The thing about it is that it's going to be short. With any IG video, um, with any IG video that you post on your page, it's going to be the runtime is going to be, you know, at most a minute, which is really short for a fan finder. With a fan finder training, we're looking for a three and a half minute video or so or more. So that we know um, if we get a 75% video viewer on that video that they are, you know, a, a robust, you know, uh, prospective fan. That they've, they've given us a significant amount of time. With one minute videos in your IG, even at a 95% view, you can only know that they've watched a minute. So, for example, and this is just kind of important to address at the top. I'm running a... Uh, I'm running a fan finder right now on both fam, uh, Facebook and IG, and the Facebook one is the full length is four minutes, and then I actually uploaded the IG one as a dark post so I could get two minutes, and then I'm counting my 50% views on Facebook, you know, as equivalent to my 95% views on IG, because they're both about two minutes. So just make sure that if you run it, um, that you know, you're, you'll be facing that reduced watch time and you won't be able to kind of have as good of a retargeting audience. Now, overall, that concept is great. And I, I love that. If you have a full length of that, I would run that on Facebook. And if you have a longer, if, if you have a two minute cut, you can make that, I'd run that on Facebook or on IG. Now I'm going to hop over to this other one. I can't believe you have the emu. That's so cool. Yeah, emu system is 1200. So cool they use it live, dude. I love that thing. My friend Hunter, um, he had like an old sedan and he traded the sedan for the emu. <laughs> it was like a super beat down, but that was like how he paid for it. <laughs> This is cool too, man. Because like heads are going to be like, see the emu and be like, whoa. You know? These are great. I'm, I'm not going to dwell on them too much because like I'm getting the vibe, you know? But the live one is sick. The studio one was sick. Yeah, and if this is a similar vibe, that's also sick. I would say you're nailing... You know these are great. I wouldn't I wouldn't think twice about whether or not you should redo them or overthink them or overdo them. Like this concept, this attitude, the different angles, the different um, performance elements are awesome. Love it. You're really bringing it to life. I I would I have no complaints. Very good. Very good possibilities for fan finders.
Um, I want to address a few things in the comments. So, um, if you're posting links in the YouTube chat, I won't be able to see them. I'm sorry to say, which I'm just realizing. So we'll have to do our best to communicate um, where I'm looking for things. Like, for example, Jeremy, your one sheet, uh, that link did not show up. I'm sorry to say. Um, if you want to, if you want to type out the link and break it up so that it actually breaks out the hyperlink, I can kind of recreate it and find it that way. Um, so who else? Electric neon clouds with the EPK, same thing. If you can manage to break up your link, um, so that it doesn't hyperlink out, that'll be the key. I'm trying to make sure I got covering bases everywhere. Nothing too too heavy on Facebook right now. Um, MXU, yeah, if the, if the vids are, are less than two minutes, um, I would run it for 95% video viewers. And I would think about preparing another vid that could be longer so that you can get a longer audience out of it. Ekiyani. Here you are. You posted your questions in the other area. I'm trying to load that other area. We're, we're, we're facing some snags there. Um, so please pivot to the comment sections where you can, everybody. Sorry to say. Uh, what else? Which is, you had a question on corrupting our ad account by making changes to it. What actions ruin your algorithm? Changing locations, budgets, audiences? Um, um, changing, okay, it's not about changing midway. Well, when you say actions ruin your algorithm, I'm assuming you mean like what abrupt changes in your advertising campaign, um, kind of cause it to lose its momentum or lose its optimization footing. Uh, pretty much making any change that isn't the name of the campaign uh, will cause Facebook to kind of stop for a second and have to, to reassess and will change up some of its decision making. We, in general, recommend that you duplicate out any asset that you're going to change and run it on that new duplicate. So if we're running one campaign, one ad set, one ad, and we wanted to change the image on that ad, Rather than going in and changing it, we would duplicate that ad, uh, just change the image on that duplicate, and then shut off that original, and then just see how uh, that works. So that's, I guess, what I would say. Um, budgets, audiences, and targeting will definitely kind of change, will, will cause Facebook to relearn in that campaign. I think that's what you're asking. Um, yeah, MXU, have no doubt about it. You're killing it, I think. Um, all right, let me, I'm trying to get this watch page open. Please give me one moment, everybody. Anything else on Facebook, my people, my Facebook peeps? Shay, anything worthwhile? Um, all right, peeps, I think we're almost back to normal here. I think we're almost back in full swing. Let me address some, some itty bitty questions while it loads. Um, you're welcome, witches. Um, Revic Records, do I have any experience with fan finders for instrumental music where there is no performer? Sure. And in fact, I would say that this applies for any kind of music, whether or not, uh, with, in the, you know, where there isn't a performer. Right? It doesn't matter what you make, what it sounds like. If there's no performer in the um, video, the trouble there is is brand recall later on. Right, So if, if you're not in your fan finder, 
the whole point of the fan finder is to introduce, right? Introduce yourself to a potential audience and then get them to do something further. Um, the trouble there is that when you retarget them and you're hitting them, trying to get them into your email list or to make a sale or something, and, and you're coming to them uh, as yourself, they're going to have no concept of where you came from because they're going to not rem make the connection of like, this is the guy that was in that video I liked. Now, that doesn't mean that you you personally have to be in both of these things. But one thing you need to think of is brand recall. So when you, you think about that fan finder, when you're thinking about the fan finder, you should think about what's coming after it. So if your fan finder is kind of like ambient music where with kind of generalized, you know, stock imagery, which is kind of a problem we often see, uh, or rather a suboptimal choice we often see. And you're like, hey, uh, you know, I'm a musician X, Y, Z. It's you're not giving them a lot to connect between. Um, hello, Josh Wilson. Welcome in. So the key is just making sure that you're matching aesthetics and symbols between the fan finder and what's to come. So whether if you're not in it, make sure that there's some kind of symbolistic thing that will be very clear uh, when you follow up that the fan finder is a connected video, right? All right, peeps. I'm almost, I'm almost ready to find uh, the the questions that you left. I know, I know the suspense is palpable here. Um, I know a lot of you have left links. A lot of you have are saying you've left your your problems in or your your assets in. Uh, in the proper area. I will get to those in a moment. I'm trying to see what else we got here. Um, Electric Neon Clouds, your EPK. You said uh, the link is. Electric Neon Clouds.com slash EPK. I want to check it out. I'm loading it up, Electric Neon Clouds, and I got it up, so let me share it right now. Okay, cool. So EPK bio, found in 2018. Brothers, synth, alternative pop, aesthetic, uh-huh. eighties pop, modern, alternative music. Cool, okay. Music, um, I'm assuming, okay, so this is just the cover, Spotify, embedded widget, videos, press. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. So, what I'll say for one is that um, we don't talk, you know, like I'm not a vetted source on EPK effectiveness, of course. Um, being that, you know, it is relevant to what we're doing, but typically we're talking more about proper digital marketing, you know, in the, in the most uh, proper sense. So what my take my opinions with a grain of salt. I don't. I'm not a booker. I don't know what converts as well as anyone, um, when it comes to EPKs. But overall, I'm digging it. Right. I mean, the things that are important for me uh, when I'm making something like an EPK or when I'm trying to book a show. I I want to make sure to address you know. The pain points of the booker being like you know. Uh, 
what stop you know what friction do you have at play when it comes to booking me it's like you want to make sure i can draw you want to make sure that i'll bring a good show um you want to make sure that i will be a good business partner when when you know putting on the show with you and you know partnering with the venue um you want to make sure my music's good obviously uh you want to see that i have some traction online right um so i think in general, this bio is, is addressing some of that, but I actually like to say, you know, I like to link out to the socials, which I see that you're doing here in a less, um, in a more muted manner with the, with the footer buttons, but I'll say, I'll typically put some numbers down, right? I'll be like, if I'm booking in, you know, for example, in Canada, like you're saying 350 shows across Canada, I would, I would dig through my data and say in all of, you know, let me show you my numbers, uh, in all the major Canada, you know, markets, you know, in this market, we have, uh, this amount of email subscribers or, you know, f- people in our Facebook custom audience. And you can kind of dumb it down and say, we have an ob- audience of about blah, 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 as sourced from XYZ data and show that stuff off. So that, I guess that would be something that I would put forth as something to think about, but all in all, I think this is doing, this would do what you were, you're aiming for it to do. And, um, I'm not seeing any big holes in here, so I dig it. Um, let's see if we got got the things loaded here. Not quite. We're close. We're close. Checking out the old comments here. Juniper Douglas, wondering if I could take a look at the first four squeeze pages of your membership site and give some pointers to what might change. It's still in beta, so any advice would be helpful. Everything is free if you don't want to claim the free plus shipping and handling and continue to the free membership area. That's what you posted on the Indies Live page. Okay. Revic Records, you're welcome. Um, give me one. Just checking out some things. All right, checking out the Facebook channel here. Josh Brister says, could I get some feedback on the new style of your recurring content? You'd really appreciate it. Link to a YouTube video. So it looks like you can link, uh, I, I hesitate to say this, but if you go to our Entrepreneur Indies, if you're in our Entrepreneur Indies group um, on Facebook, it looks like it's accepting links in the comments over there. That would be a way that you could get me um, your assets. All right, so I am going to share this video. Again, it, you won't be able to hear it. It's going to sing a song and tell a story. So you have a 14-minute video. Okay, cool. So this is... <laughs> okay doing some youtubery if i ever saw it so it looks like we're in vlog mode then you break out a uh guitar back in vlog mode and you ha- you're showing off a piece of art here then you're outside. Back to the guitar, back outside, back to the guitar. Cool. Obviously, I can't watch the full 13 minutes. Um, Bert, I guess. What I'll say, so you're asking, what's the, how do you, how do I feel about this as like a recurring content thing? I think it's awesome. Sorry, Josh. I think it's great. Um, you're putting a lot of effort into it in a way that I'm appreciating, like, you know, it feels like you're thinking about how can you really imbue this video with all sorts of different angles of your life. Here's my family. If, if you're okay with showing that, you know, you know, here's my home life. Here's um, some different scenery. Here's a song. Here is art. I appreciate here, you know, and you're kind of concierging that whole 
um, experience. I think that's good if you have, if, if you're kind of sending these out every so often, because you got to think about, you know, what is, what is recurring content for and where does it typically sit in the buddy system? Well, um, you know, to those who know, those that know, um, you know, it comes after the permission phase typically. So we're talking about, you know, they've gotten into the email list and, uh, they are already aware of you. You've already done kind of a lot of work in the ad space to to win them over. And they're in uh, your email list and they're digging everything that you're doing, ideally, if, if they're clicking over to this nurturing stuff. And um, so I like to use nurturing content to sort of pull back the veil, so to speak, right? Like they know you're a musician. They know that you're making music all the time. But uh, you can pull back the veil and say, like, here's a little bit more about who I am, what my interests are, what I do outside of music that kind of explains the music further, right? And I think what's key there is personability as well. Um, so, I, yeah, I think that was great. I think thinking about that variety and adding that um, kind of tour guide vibe, so to speak, to it of like, this is, let me show you everything that's on my mind by way of these visuals and these stories. I think that's good. And I like the length, honestly, you know, there's a lot to dig into for people that are, that are interested. Um, put the one sheet on your website link spelled out above. I'm sorry, Jeremy. I can't see the link. It, it just doesn't show it. I'm sorry to say. Um, Evan Clark says, all you have right now is the lead magnet is two downloads. You know, not great, but they're not available anywhere else. It's not like they can stream it. Yeah. Um, and it's really about uh, how you present those two downloads. Those two downloads could be the most sought after thing ever if you're really making it um, appear to be as valuable uh, as they can be. Um, I know peeps that we have, we're having issues getting the links in the comment section. So I know a lot of people have been dropping links in the YouTube comments. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy's, so yeah, if you want to, if you know where the Entrepreneur Indies group is, hop over there, drop links in that comment section and I'll be able to take a look. I'm sorry that I'm not able to access the comments that you left, um, on the page. I'm doing my best here. So I'm trying to go back and make sure that we are, that I've addressed everything here. Electric Down Clouds, good. MXC Beats, good. Jeremy's hopping over to Facebook. I appreciate that. Um, which is, talk to you there. Eka Yanni performs. Um, I'm working on getting your question loaded here, but if you want to hop, I know you're in the Indies group, if you want to hop in there. Okay, I pulled up the questions. <laughs> All right, let's dig in, my <laughs> friends okay i'm hopping over to the uh the, the backlogged questions these ones take a little bit of um precedence so i'm gonna i'm gonna dive in there john ward here says um well this is technically not an audit so maybe i should start by looking for people who uh who left an asset so let me start there Zeke Erickson left his uh, his website here now, and I know you were just in the um, you were in the comments, so I know you're watching. So Juniper Douglas, I believe. Uh, wondering if I take a look at the first four squeezes of your membership site and give some pointers on what I might change if it's still in beta. So any advice? Right. Okay. Let you know if anything is confusing about the offer. Is there a different way I'd structure it? Any tips would be amazing. Cool. Let's load that site and take a look. The future of live storytelling. The entire world of Juniper Dog is in one place, free and accessible for everyone. Live, exclusive live performances. Live storytelling is what we do. We uh, view live performances, short films, more. Produced by Juniper Dog's team. Three CDs sent directly to you. Okay. Unreleased demos and albums. 
Meet the creators. What are we waiting for? All right, this is what I'll say off the bat, Zeke. Uh, above the fold, future live storytelling, entire world of Jennifer Douglas in one place. Brain accessible for everyone. Okay, so offhandedly, I'm like, all right. And the button's up there, which I actually like this button. Um, I'm like, okay, it's a little vague, which is okay, maybe. Um, I can imagine what it is, uh, you know, a, a bunch of stuff to check out in one place. Then, uh, excuse the live performances. Okay, that adds a little bit of color to it. Then we get into the free CD, and I'm like, wait, I thought we were talking about just, this seems like a separate thing entirely, right? The free CD, it's like, is that part of it? Like, if I get free access, will I get all this digital stuff and then also a CD sent to me? Um, that would be my thought. Is like, oh, I get a free CD with the access. Now, let me know if that's not the case. Then meet the creators on release demos. Yeah, I dig that. Um, and it looks like there's more of a Q&A here. All right, so let's get free access, shall we? Okay. Test person. Um, fake at gmail.com. I'm sorry. I have to do this. Whoa, I get a I get to enter a password. Or create an account. Okay. Test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's weak. <laughs> Fake at gmail.com. All right. Thank you, Paige. We want to send you your free CD. Is that a Moog back there? Zeke? Looks like a sub 37 by Moog. I'd love to get rid of this little widget here, but it's just not going to happen. Maybe if I refresh. Full length DVD record, error to introspection. Wow, okay, that's annoying. Nothing I can do. You just cover shipping. Okay, so okay, so you hit them with an offer upon opt-in, send my free CD. And I should have checked this out, but okay, then they can get right into it. Oh my god, I'm gonna shut this off. I'm sorry. Well, I hesitate to, okay. Um, so they can hop right to purchasing. We really want to send you the CD, but honestly, free does not last forever. Limited time. Skip the wait. Get immediate, immediate access to your membership. Over the course of the next two days, we'll be sending you exclusive nervous porn steam live videos. Um, hmm. All right, so if I say no thanks. Okay. Hmm. Skip the wait and get instant access. Okay, so I'm I think I'm understanding, but the fact that I didn't get it right out of out of the gate might be enough of a kind of explanation. So what I'm gathering uh, is that you go to, and I'm sure you've been in the comments, <laughs> um, yeah, so what I've gathered here, Zeke, is that um, it's like an ultimate album launch kind of thing, right, where they can opt in, and you're explaining that. And then they opt in, and theoretically they get those emails, you know, three days of, of stuff, right? But they're immediately given the free plus shipping and handling offer right there in case they want to just take it. And with when they buy that CD, they get all three days at once. And if they don't, they can bypass it and then they just get each day subsequently. Is that right? Because if if that's the case, it's not clear, right? It's not clear that it's like, hey, you just opted in for this free thing that will take days to complete. But you could also buy this CD in the next couple days and get all of it immediately as well. And 
if that's the case, I don't think that's a compelling offer because they already have it. They just have to wait a couple days. Um, and typically an offer, while that is a low hanging, you know, that is kind of a doable offer. Um, it is a little soon, I think. Now the question would be, you know, if it's working for you so far, if you're getting takers right there, then that's good. I think it's a little convoluted though. I would probably just focus on the permission phase being the permission phase and stick that free plus shipping handling offer at the end of um, the email experience. Let me know if I'm not hearing this right or seeing this right. Um, but that's what I will say on the matter. The design overall was, was, was not bad. I liked it. Um, think about the structure of the offer, though. Okay, let's hop over to Andrea Daniele, I believe. Or, sorry. Yeah, Andrea Daniele. They say, can I please review this LP for an opt-in campaign landing page? This is the version of the banner image. I will be making another version of an intro video where the band vocalist, Irene, will be welcoming viewers and explaining the benefits of signing up to see which is more effective. So A-B testing with an image versus a video. For my information, the only opt-in button that works that triggers light box is the one on the main banner image. The others are inactive, still working on them. Questions. Is the offer clear and compelling enough? Two. Uh, suggestions on free lead generation form provider that integrates with MailChimp or allows for MailChimp group segmentation. MailChimp forms aren't great. I agree. And I cannot make an inline form that would fit the purple banners. Um, I, are you using Squarespace? Oh, I don't think so. I think this is Banzoogle, isn't it? Let me know what you used to make this. I don't know why I'm assuming it's Banzoogle. I guess I don't really know what Banzoogle looks like. Anyway, open the ISQ secret music box. Open our secret box featuring exclusive and unreleased videos, bonus tracks, behind scenes, content, and enter into three day physical experience that lived directly your box. Open the box. Ooh, I like this. I love the look of that. I like that it's a postcard vibe in a way. So right, then the other ones are not working, I take it. Um, she just performed live in London. Was there only a release track? Took a cover version of a New York singles. Hmm. Features. Chat with Irene. Nice. I would put more... I would put more stock on this in uh, the above the fold, right? Like in the above the fold here, I would say, I would incorporate that more into the bribe. You know, unreleased videos, tracks, behind the scenes stuff, blah, blah, blah. I feel like by now, especially that stuff kind of runs together, you know? I feel like it's easy to do this kind of opt-in thing and it's like, you know, you get music and videos and images and. You know, it's uh, it's very understood at this point. It's like, yeah, I get, it, I get it. I'll see a lot of things, <laughs> um, but I feel like if you're if you're including maybe a live stream or Q and A's kind of stuff that you do iteratively, um, that is more palpably experiential. It's like if you hop in here, um, you know, Irene will be guiding you, oftentimes in real time throughout this world of music that we have right? That explains everything. It's like, you will have this tour guide, you'll have access to this person, they care about you, you can talk with them, and they're going to show you all this stuff and explain it further. So I would just challenge you to, to, I mean, my immediate example that I'm coming up with is like honing in on that. But I'm what I'm largely saying in a more general sense is, how can you make this sound more tied up and experiential? Like open this, the ISQ secret music box think one step further than the content, right? Like in seeing these unreleased videos and music and photos and whatever, what will the affect be? Where will that leave them? And and when you can devise that, try to make that the bribe. You know what I mean? Like see what it takes for a band as wacky as us or whatever, as classic as us, whatever, um, to be that band, you know, for example. See what goes into, for example, my band, you know, I conceive all the music on my own. 
it gets pretty kind of maximalist. And then I bring it to this band and I like, you know, we, we kind of have to invent these ways of creating sounds and things, you know, to reproduce live. And like that in itself, if I were to do something like that, the bribe might be like, see how an experimental synth pop band takes, you know, uh, an 80 track Ableton session to a four piece band or whatever. Right. Uh, more, I would phrase that in a more palatable way, but that's what I'm kind of getting at. I like the reviews. <laughs> I recognize this. I um, and I'm sorry, I, I don't remember the name of of your name right now, but this looks a bit like the the sales page, the opt-in page I made with using this emoji and putting authentic in there, as well as available and inclusive. <laughs> Were you doing some swiping in the in these sales benefits here? <laughs> um, it's funny because I actually just deleted that opt-in page in favor of a different one. So there's that. Anyway, overall, dig it. I would say mostly hone in on that one element that I was just talking about there. Um, kind of restructuring the feel of the bribe. Free lead generation form provider. I I do not know. You typically, um, typically with forms, Andrea, Andrea. Uh, typically with forms, I mean, we recommend a web. We usually recommend a website builder that removes that issue, right? It's like usually the website builder we that you're using has enough z integrations or enough Zapier capability that you don't face that need for it kind of form plugin or an embed or something. Sorry to say, I don't really know. Um, but if you can zap out of that, what I'll say is if you can zap out of that site, then zap into a Google sheet and you can, you can zap um, out of that Google sheet any which way. So that, that could be a way that you could avoid um, kind of a, a janky third party form plugin or something. Um, okay. Hopping over to YouTube comments right quick just to make sure we're all good. Stephanie Crosby, you hopped over to Facebook. I will get there after I go through this backlog, Stephanie, of um, YouTube comments. Cool. All right, let's keep trucking on these. Uh, these backlog comments here. Evan Davis, landing page for auditing. This is where we leave it, right? This is where you leave it. Let us um, take a look together. Two free songs landing page. All right, so this was the downloads thing that was mentioned before. Two unreleased songs free to your inbox. Can't get them anywhere else right now. Just here, sign up and they'll appear in your inbox. Get them now. I like this transitional pattern here. The guitar sounded like it was screaming at me, and I loved every second of it. <laughs> this Napster logo. <laughs> That's funny. Here's forever in studio quality. The song's empty and wait for that. Yours for life, and at the quality it was the sign of the earth. You experience the song as the way Hazlitt intended them. And no mainstream corruption. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> this be one of the first what i'll say is that i could see how this little emoticon would convey the wrong thing to the to, to certain people and this you know and i think this is funny though i, I get what you're what you're getting at here all right i want to hear him. the overall sound is exquisite and rockish jimmy licks with zappa vocals that's really good this is funny how the button starts to evolve as they go down it's like Get them now. All right, I want to hear them. Just get them to me already. All right, what I'll say here is that the feeling I'm getting is um, the design of this page feels kind of clerical, right? Like, you're talking about rock music, but I feel like I'm on, like, a medical website. And I don't mean that to sound harsh. It's just, you know what I mean? Like, we really, I think there's something to really hone in on that could turn people away. Uh, design wise, because you're talking about your music is like we're talking Zappa, Jimi Hendrix, guitar solos, the guitar was screaming at me. You're like talking anti establishment. 
you know, like this page design does not feel in line with that to me. This feels a lot safer, a lot cleaner, a lot more kind of like businessy. So I would think about how can you make this way more rougher around the edges, match this tube that you're pushing off because people are going to definitely be confused, I think. Um, so that's one thing. Second of all, um, this above the fold, it's like a lot of text and it's very nondescript, right? Like I would be interested to see you up here, have something, have the music more forward, right? Like they're getting music, you know? So can we get some pictures of you with a guitar, um, uh, maybe a live shot or maybe a video of something. There needs to be more conveying of music in the design of this page is what I'd say. And I think part of that is the color scheme and kind of the, the layout and, um, and the patterns and whatnot. But secondly, I just think there could be more, you know, music imagery happening. So those would be the biggest things for me right off the bat. Um, and, and that would kind of be, I would kind of look no further than those recommendations at first. So that's what I'll say on it. Let me know if you have any additional um, kind of notes there, Evan. Evan Davis, I believe. I know you're also in the Facebook page right now. Cool. Joel Rowland. Uh, you left a question, so I will get to that at the end. Uh, I'm going to fast track the audits here. Simon Voigt, I hope that I'm saying that right, says, let me share the screen so we can all read it together. 2 p.m. is like 4 a.m., so you'll leave it. Appreciate it. Um, you used a fan finder video. The other videos are the actual music you produce and which will appear on an album once you have a few more tracks produced. You're thinking a mediocre live loop performance on the rolly light block. Okay. Not as good as it should be, nor representative of the rest of your music. Okay. Your target audiences, though, what do you sound like? Um... Neil you know, Thron, Joe Giving, John Hopkins, bigger artists like Bill Glass on Zimmer. Okay. Those for artists have a smaller reach, definitely. <laughs> um, you're thinking a better fan finder video should practice landscape one as it is a single track in the DAW. It's recorded from a live performance of the song with almost zero editing. Practice an over shoulder view of your fingers hitting both keyboards. Whilst you can see notes being recorded in the DAW might be an evocative video. Um, okay. So I'm pretty confused, <laughs> to be honest. You have a couple of videos, but you're unsure what you sound like, and you're unsure if it's, if it'll be representative of the rest of your music. If it's not representative of the rest of your music, you know, you'll, you're going to have a hard time because, uh, you know, you're teeing up your first stage of your funnel to have expectations kind of not matched, not met later on. So that's something to definitely think about if you really think that's the case. Though I would I would get some second opinions because a lot of times we feel like, you know, our music is way different than, you know, amongst the songs when it really is. Whereas it could be that an album of yours sounds like it's so different from track to track, but to other people it feels really cohesive. So definitely get that second opinion. But you're not sure what you sound like um, and you're not sure if it's, you know, if you should get a better one with more live vibes I'm, I'm guessing so i'm going to open up these two and i guess i'll just comment on them I'm not really sure what you're looking for entirely but you are sleeping very hard because it is 5 a.m where you are <laughs> so i will try to answer it as robustly as i can is this the most boring music ever is your headline oh that's a tricky one Right. Let's see here. Okay, so we got an app here. That's a cool thing. That's a really neat instrument there.
All right, if it's this vibe the whole time, let's see here. Okay. I'm going to, for this one, there's a lot of intrigue that could be capitalized on. That instrument's really cool. Um, using the app is interesting. I would make it all about that if you were to use this. Um, there needs to be a little bit more motion. I mean, if it's like, okay, because we're going for retention. If this is what they're seeing at minute or, or at 10 seconds in, and then that's what they see at the, you know, at it never changes, you're going to lose people very quickly because the the concept of the video exhausts itself very quickly. So I think about more how you can reveal more instruments, reveal more kind of technique or or add some visual intrigue with, you know, a moving camera um, or different camera shots. So that's what I would have you think about. That would be the most succinct way of kind of giving notes there. Now let me look at this other one and that might add some more. Okay. Okay. So this goes with what I was saying um, at the top of the call where if you have instrumental music, no performer in the shot, and it's we're looking at kind of like stock image, you know, it doesn't matter how well this does, people are not gonna remember between step one and step two, you know, why they are where they are and are, you know, in their in your buddy system. And it's good, you're gonna be hard pressed to figure out how to even bridge people from here to here. If even with that in mind, it's like how do you get people that cared about this to to care about the next thing, right? Um, because the kind of audience that this will produce is just going to be a very passive audience, right? Like you're not giving them a lot to bite onto, not a lot to really kind of wonder about and think about and emotionally, you know, react to. So uh, this this does not work as a fan finder in my mind. I wouldn't even kind of mess with something like this. Your first fan finder is way more what we're looking at. And I think it's just a matter of, again, implementing some more intrigue, thinking more about the performance and um, not being afraid to be a little bit more personable and in the shot there. Um, okay, so... That is, there are still some, some comments there that are non, you know, assets. They're just questions. So I will try to get to those. I'm going to scan both comment sections here before I move on. Country Strike has a general question. Uncomely Music, hello. Hello, Greg Freeman. Good to see you in here. Can you send send a fan finder video uh, for audit here or fully booked? Um, we're probably fully booked. If you can, and we're also having trouble getting links sent if you didn't send one ahead of time. So if you can find a way to get it to me in a timely manner, uh, either through the Facebook group or leaving uh, a comment in the comments widget on the watch page, if that makes sense to you, then do so. Um. I think overall, though, we're pretty good on YouTube comments. I'm going to hop over to Facebook. Evan has been taken care of. Stephanie uh, has a video here for me to check out. So I will check Stephanie Crosby. I'll check out your video here. Then I'll dig into kind of general questions that are lingering in the comment section. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So I think we're we're up to par here. Stephanie says on Facebook, coming from YouTube, do you think the Arabic language video might work as a fan finder if you subtitled it? Let us see. Let us see. DJ Lethal Skills. This is neat so far. Oh, he comes out of the sunroof. This is a cool, you know, this is... <laughs> this is good for a fan finder. 
you know? Anything with consistent motion is really great because this is, you know, this isn't obviously like straight up an OK Go music video where it's like over the top crazy. But um, when you think about those music videos, it's like there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of like this is happening right now. And so this is a really simple concept of like, okay, there's consistent props, consistently changing imagery. There's a performative aspect. Like there's a lot to just wait for, right? Like what's going to happen next is just always a question in your head. Love it. Yes. So great for a fan finder, I think. I dig it. I would cut the intro here. I would cut, cut out the cover if you could, the cover um, text there. I'd probably start it right when this comes out. Maybe start it right here. Yeah, and then it's it's in the back. Now, in terms of putting the subtitles on it, yes. I think you could run it to Greenlight Countries with um, English subtitles, and it could be cool. It's going to be a little bit different, right? It's going to be, you know, it's, it's more of an unorthodox way of doing things. So I can't say, you know, I've never seen... I've never done that before. So I don't know what kind of response you'd get, right? That might, that's definitely a unique thing that might throw off the conventional response. Um, but it's something to try, right? Because it's a cool video. It's understand, like I understand it, even though, like I'm, I'm enjoying the video, even though I don't understand the language and I, but I like the tune. So I think mean, that's something to think of, but uh, obviously you're going to have trouble running it to, Arabic countries because you're gonna be dealing with some some data that you don't want to deal with unfortunately um I like what your head's at though it's something to, to think about I, I would give it a small test all right so let me hop to the general questions in the backlog here that are not kind of asset oriented the first one we have is John Ward he says Backstory, ran a fan finder with multiple audiences, created a lookalike audience from it, went great. Well, the lookalike audience approved cost per view. Then you created a Spotify follower finder campaign with the same long form video using only the lookalike audience plus the Spotify interest exclusion from the fan finder campaign, also done well. Your question is, you're now adding story ads using clips of the same video, but you're curious if you should use the exact same lookalike audience uh, from the long form video. Uh, are the people who use IG stories, Facebook stories different enough that you would be starting over and trying multiple slash different audiences to create another unique lookalike audience, blah, blah, blah. Or should you keep the exact same lookalike? Sorry, so detailed. Yeah, use the same lookalike. <laughs> use the same lookalike on just the stories placement and see how it goes. That should get, that should be enough of a, of a solid you know, first guess, and you know, you're working with enough data, Facebook will understand what you're trying to do in that case, right? It, it, the same principle, it's the same principle. Um, see how it goes. If for some reason it doesn't translate to IG, then yes, maybe you'll want to do some IG oriented things to get data that you can build a lookalike off of there, like gain some IG video views and then uh, do it as you say. Uh, try it first and feel fine about it. It'll probably go well. If it doesn't, like abysmally, like how am I not getting this like a, even close to a similar result? Then maybe you want to repeat the same process, just IG exclusive, like run some IG traffic, get some video views there, and then make it look like off of that. Ekiyani, a uh, new member of Indie Pro here. You're implementing green light warmth boosting and it's going great. Just one glitch though, having a devil of a time Uploading the Excel CSV file created from MailChimp mailing list to Facebook as a custom audience. It seems as if, as if Excel is not downloading to cloud in order to upload to Business Manager. You can see the spreadsheet on your desktop, but you won't be able to open it. Thoughts? Many chat, IG, Facebook, Greenlight, Greenlight Warmth services working. I'd like to add these subscribers. Um, make sure that's indeed a CSV file. Is not downloading to cloud in order to upload... Yeah, I mean, there's not much I'm going to be able to help with here uh, because it's not really a digital marketing question, but it make sure that it's a CSV file. If you're using Excel, make sure that the, your, uh, what you're looking at, when you download it as, as a CSV, it'll only download one tab if there are multiple tabs in Excel. 
just ensure that it's a dot CSV because that'll be the only way you can do it. Joel Rowland says, you search the group for this answer and looked into the indie pro courses, but you're still feeling unsure about this. When trying to build a retargetable audience with FanFighter, how many 25 to 75% video views is large enough to uh, justify running an album launch? Should you be shooting for at least 10,000, 25% views before even considering it? What's my opinion? Thank you so much for everything. My opinion is, uh, you know, we hesitate to give hard numbers like this because I could say a number and all of you on here would be like, Jesse said 10,000. And then you're going to take it as law, even though in your particular case, it might not be the best choice, right? You might want to wait for a long time or, or you might be ready to go out of the gate. The overall point is that when you're looking at something like an ultimate album launch, you're trying to build an audience that you have to retarget to take a pretty big action, which is become a lead. The bigger that the action, the bigger the action you're trying to get your audience to take, the more algorithmic, you know, gas Facebook will will need. Because if you give it a big audience, you're like, get me purchasers. Facebook's going to be like, dude, that's super. You know, that's not the easiest thing in the world, and not all these people are going to want to buy. So I need to fight through all of these really like fair weather random people that don't want to buy. And it's going to, you know, that's going to cost energy. It's going to cost CPM costs. It's going to raise your CPM costs to find these people within the mess of people that don't want it. And that's why when you have a great ad and a great audience that it's meant for, CPMs are low and it's very kind of, you know, frictionless. So if you're saying, Facebook, I need leads to this opt-in page for my ultimate album launch and you're giving it a thousand people, Facebook's going to be like, yo, only like 50 of these people are even going to think about being leads. And you're only giving, you know what I mean? Like I need more to work with. So small audiences in general for anything are not going to be what you want. You're going to want to likely overdo your audience. So that's really what I want to say at first. Now, my personal experience, I ran an ultimate album launch to a warm audience of 14,000 75% video viewers and it went it went decently, went fine. I got about $2 leads, two and a half dollar leads. Um which is a little bit expensive compared to some other people, but given my kind of niche that made sense. I would say don't even think about doing leads until you're at like 10,000 75% video viewers, 10 to 20,000 75% video viewers. And I say that kind of as a safety measure, right? You could arguably do less. You could arguably do more. But the bigger it is, the more successful it's just more primed to be. And I want to make that clear. Don't underdo the, the, the intro phase and the audience size. I would go for 10,000, 75% views kind of at a minimum, you know, at your own risk if you go less than that, if you're trying to do like a big opt-in campaign. So those are all of the backlogged um, questions, which I'm happy to say we have tackled. Um, looks like, okay, so I think we have just a few lingering questions in the comment sections. So let me start with YouTube. Um, Start from the top here, MXC. We got Electron Neon Clouds, Revic. We got Jeremy Volts. Um, I don't think we actually ended up getting you in Jeremy Volts, but I'm not sure if you were able to post in Facebook instead. Which is we got Ekiana, we got Jennifer Douglas, yes. Um, Evan Clark, I'm not sure if you ended up posting elsewhere, or maybe if you were also Evan Davis, I'm not sure. Um, Stephanie, we, we talked about your video country strike. You're trying to reboot your music career after your band broke up. Your idea is to turn everything you'll be doing into a podcast. What do I think? Because I, you want to demonstrate what you've learned from us and show musicians, especially in Croatia, where you're from, that you can be a musician while, while make a living and make an impact. Yeah, the, sure. It could, it could be great. The key is just placement within your system. I wouldn't make a podcast thinking, I'm going to make a podcast about being a successful musician and why it's feasible and 
I'll tell anyone about it, <laughs> you know, and see what happens. I would think about why you're doing it and where it would occur in your buddy system. Um, because if it's, if you end up doing this and, and your main goal is like gathering, extending out some philosophy about making music and your whole buddy system is going to be about that and it's less about a solo career, then that might be a good leader thing. Is like, let me pull in people that if they like this podcast, they'll like everything that comes after. If you're leading with like fan finders of your solo music and you're performing and then they get in through your email list and then uh, the podcast is all about kind of general music concepts for the larger community, um, that'll be a little bit disjunct. So just think about how that works. But overall, podcast or recording, recurring content, you know, that is always a good consideration. It's just a matter of making sure you're you're using it responsibly. Um, uncomely, I see that you posted in Facebook. I'm going to address all the Facebook stuff in here now. And these will, I think, be the last few questions. Um, so we'll end it over there. So Josh, Zeke, and Stephanie, we took a look at Evan Davis as well. Max Heistein says, you set up a landing page series. You'd like my feedback. I would love to give it, and we're going to check it out together. Max Heistein, music, especially look at the new album. Gratitudes. Love a good pun. Okay, we got a big video here. What I'll say is that this video takes up some major real estate. Cool, I like this so far though. So this is four and a half minutes. Okay, got some visualization here. Okay, so the video is is workable. I like what it does. I like you know you're, you're showing off the music, you're showing off the aesthetic, you're you're being forward facing, you're you're being personable. It's taken up some major real estate here. Like I would arguably get here especially like at the new album. And then I would maybe not ever scroll down thinking that this was the end of it. Cause it's just the whole page. So I make this smaller and then um, put some more copy, maybe to the right of it, explaining some more about it below free album merch deals, more gratitudes. Um, okay. We have pictures of merch, but they don't click out. So for one, okay. And then we got the opt-in kind of, kind of below. We got another video, I guess. I don't know where the, this lo loads. Something else? Okay, song number two. All right. The next order of business for you here is taking this way up, take this opt-in form and probably take it, put it to the right of this video and make this video smaller. So they load together. Then these merge deals, I would take them out, especially because they don't click out, right? Um, typically, this comes later after they opt in, right? I don't think you need this big banner here. I don't think you need these here. Um, this might this might be okay here to where you give them this next day's worth of thing of of like a video and a song, and if they click over. Maybe they can opt in again. Like maybe they are investigating this page and they don't opt in on the first page, but this can act as kind of a second moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you just need to hone in on the opt-in form as the purpose of them being here. There's 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 a, too much extra stuff on here. Uh, you know, think about the merch stuff later after they're in your email list and bring this up and, and, and reduce the size of this video. Those would be my main things there. So that is Max and then Tom Uncomely. We can see your comments. Um, your fan finder, you're testing for your band. Can I give you feedback? Yes, I can. 
Um, this will be the last thing we check out. So let's take a look. After this grunge rock or punk, after this, grunge rock or punk will dominate music in 2020. Okay. I would put a comma after, I mean, maybe it's too late, but. Parasites. Hmm. Well. Cool. I actually dig this. Usually, I mean, typically, I don't mean to say that like I'm surprised, but typically, you know, I think this is a good amount of when you have a lot of cuts and a lot of kind of like general foot like that um, alongside the performance, you know, it can feel a little bit um, too shiny or like, oh, I'm very aware I'm watching a music video right now. But I like this. There's a lot of personality. I like the filtering that's going on. It feels very cohesive to the aesthetic. Um, so I dig it. I, it. It's worth a go. Um, I'm not sure what you said exactly about it. Let me see what you asked. Can I give you feedback? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I like that there's a performance aspect in there, and I like you know, it feels cool, feels nice. I get a sense of the energy. Um, and I think your your mixture of like performance and non performance footage is actually decent enough. And I like that the aesthetic of everything feels kind of rough around the edges. I like the color grading. Um, so I think that could work. And I, I think for a rock um, fan or like a punk fan, they could be into that. Uh, it does feel kind of retro. It feels kind of like Reminds me of like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 kind of era of music, if that makes any sense. Um, in a way that I'm like, this is good. It kind of reminds me of like Dead Kennedys or something. Um, so I like it. It's worth a try. I think one challenge you might face is that, you know, your faces aren't exactly, you know, it does kind of feel like, oh, these are, this is kind of like a general group of, of rockers, kind of nondescript group of rockers. Um, you might have a hard time getting that brand recall but when it comes time to do that I would take some of these key clips and imbue them in, into your retargeting video so that when the retargeting video shows up it's like oh there's those scenes from that video that were really notable um, so I think that's what I'd say about it cool um so okay peeps I think that's everything um, I'm sorry for the First of all, the delay, but second of all, you know, that we didn't get to the, the questions right away. However, I'm glad to say we kind of got them all covered. And uh, I appreciate you all being here. Thank you for, you know, whether you were on Facebook or, or YouTube, I'm glad you were here. Some of you both, you were on both. Um, I'm going to head out here, and I hope that I helped. And uh, thank you for being here in the larger community. I hope that we continue to help you and you continue to help each other. So with that being said, stay indie and have a great rest of the week.